Well, good day to everybody. Uh, my name is Dave Cotter. I'm the, uh, the chair of the Department of Military History at the United States Army's Command and General Staff College uh, at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. Uh, and as such, um, I uh, am able to direct the history curriculum uh, for the uh, number of officers that come through this course. Every major in the U.S. Army uh, has to go through a, a one mode or another of uh, of the Command and General Staff College, and uh, here in the resident course, we teach about uh, uh, eleven to twelve hundred officers per year. Um, they are at uh, they are are preparing to go to the operational level of war. They've already proven themselves at the tactical level, and now we're preparing them for the next level uh, of operations, which is the operational uh, level of war, uh, with some, uh, some discussion of strategic level of war as well. Um, I, am a, I was a member of the inaugural uh, PhD program uh, class at, at Gratz in, uh, in Holocaust and Genocide Studies. Um, and I, I actually defended my dissertation in December of 2021 uh, and have been able to bring that uh, to the staff college in a, in a, in a number of different ways, uh, in, in including our core courses, elective courses, and a seminar each year that we take to the, uh, to the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum. And uh, so um, my grad's education has, in fact, spread uh, to the Army's uh, professional military education system. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, a challenge for many of our students because uh, they see the worst that the world has to offer. Uh, and what got me interested in this was was looking at some of the uh, internecine uh, killing that happened in Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, which which actually triggered my interest in the topic. And when I came back to the to the staff college to be on the faculty. Uh, I started uh, pursuing this 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 degree, and uh, and it's been very rewarding uh, to be able to uh, get a new generation of officers on board with that. Uh, what I'm going to do today is is sort of discuss uh, how we present the Holocaust at the beginning of this uh, elective course. Um, we, we talk about uh, genocide, uh, the history of genocide. Uh, but of course, the Holocaust is the paradigm uh, uh, event uh, about which the most has been written uh, and about uh, which the most has been studied. And so uh, I always begin uh, with the Holocaust and then branch out from there to talk about uh, other events and then how to relate and then trying to get to the, the, the aspirational concept of, of prevention. Uh, and so I'll begin with that. Uh, the second uh, lesson that the, the second meeting that we talk about the Holocaust, we basically talk about the invasion of the Soviet Union, Operation Barbarossa, uh, and then go through the worst parts of the Holocaust, the organized uh, and, and concentrated mass murder program perpetrated by the National Socialists against the Jews of Europe, the Jews and other people of Europe. Uh, we began this, uh, this discussion last week with, with our officers talking about how the how the state of, 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 uh, of Nazi Germany arose. And we talk about Hitler's rapid consolidation of power, his rise in consolidation of power, uh, the co-opting of the legal system uh, in the National Socialist State, uh, and the rising levels of persecution. Interestingly, we try to discuss how um, Hitler and his, uh, and his regime were able to sort of use a, an emotional rheostat, if you will, to turn up or turn down the heat, depending on how much negative press he was getting from the international community or his domestic audience. A uh, good example of that is turning down the heat in preparation for the, uh, the Olympics in, in 1936. Uh, in 1938, that, that uh, very famous photo photograph in the lower, lower left is, is Kristallnacht, of course, and it is uh, another example of when they turned the heat back up again. Uh, and then we end the, the first part discussion with the invasion of Poland, um, and we, we talk about how the initial Einsatzgruppen operations happened during that invasion of Poland. We talk about basically the decapitation of the Polish society. Uh, by by the, the elimination uh, of the uh, of the intelligentsia, uh, and then we roll into I, I've been using the Stanton's ten stages of genocide as a model for our officers to to uh, to latch on to to watch how um, the process of of uh, of getting to mass killing happens, 
And we, we talked about how in, in the first part, uh, you know, and I'm going to focus on the Jews of Europe or were, were, and Jews of Germany in particular in, in the early years were classified as something uh, less than the Aryan race. Uh, they were symbolized. Uh, later on, we see that they're forced to wear the Star of David, of course, but they, they're made other symbols. Uh, they, they have these uh, you know, horribly denigrating cartoons, et cetera. Uh, they're discriminated against legally. They're discriminated against socially. Uh, they're discriminated against in the, in the employment market. Um, they are dehumanized. Uh, Hitler's brand of racism, of course, was so virulent because it was a racial uh, brand of uh, of, uh, of anti-Semitism. Uh, Saul Friedlander uh, likes to describe it as it's a redemptive anti-Semitism because by eliminating the Jews from from this noble German population, we are going to purify and we're going to redeem the society. Uh, and then we talk a little bit about organization, uh, how we get ready to to execute uh, the, a, a a more permanent solution, and we'll get to that in a little bit. And then, of course, the polarization. And once those things are accomplished and culminates with uh, polarization, then by then the, the, the populace of Germany had been attuned to the fact that the Jews were the source of all their misery, the Jews were their problem, or as their bumper sticker read, the Jews are our misfortune. Uh, and then, um, and then uh, the preparation continues, of course. Uh, we see legal preparation. The most famous are the Nuremberg Laws, but there were many statutes written before the Nuremberg Laws and after uh, to further marginalize and make stateless the Jews of Germany. Uh, but it, to, today we'll talk basically about steps eight, nine, and 10, which are the persecution, the rising persecution, that evolves into the extermination, and then, of course, the, the ongoing process of denial. Uh, I know the prophet's speech is familiar to, to very many people. This is when Hitler prophetically uh, proclaims that uh, if Europe goes to war, it will not be, um, it will not result in, in, the, in the destruction of, of Europe or, or Germany, but it will be the destruction of, of uh, the annihilation of the Jewish race in Europe. And um, we see this uh, over and over again. The, the translation on the, on the left, of course, eliminates the Bolshevization clause, uh, but the message is, is still the same. So Barbarossa is where we begin here. Barbarossa, of course, uh, our officers remember from the, from the initial, um, the, the initial uh, uh, core course of history was the largest single attack uh, of two armies in the history of the world. Uh, there are some 4 million uh, German troops, just shy of 4 million German troops attacking to the east and three army groups, army groups north, center, and south that you can see depicted on the map. Uh, they are facing some 3 million Soviets uh, at the beginning. Now, the Soviets, of course, have a, a significantly larger uh, uh, manpower pool, and those numbers will increase uh, over time significantly. But at the beginning, it was about 4 million uh, Germans against some 3 million National Socialists. Um, this was an absolutely uh, momentous attack. It, it included um, some hundreds of divisions when you, when you put them all together on the front. It was, it was just an, an incredible collection of, of not just humanity, but also um, lethality. Uh, and that's what we saw in Barbarossa. Um, they, uh, the, the, the Army Group North uh, and Army Group Center saw very little resistance at the first. Army Group South, of course, had to turn south uh, and, and head down toward the Crimea, as we all know. Uh, but then, of course, the attack stalls later on. Critical to our discussion today is the mayhem visited upon the population by the Germans as they attacked into, into um, uh, deep into the Soviet territory. Um, <clears throat> Now, once they had attacked, uh, in, 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 we saw subsequent to the, to the uh, invasion of Poland, we saw the beginning of the sequestration of, of German populations and uh, of Jewish populations into ghettos. Um, that continues during uh, the, the attack into, into, um, uh, into the Soviet spaces that had, that, the, that had been occupied by the Soviets uh, as a function of the Molotov-Ribbentrop Agreement. And, and we see the, the, the growth and expansion of ghettos as they continue to prepare to, to consolidate the, the, uh, the, the German population, the Jewish population, so they can continue to move them further to the east. 
uh, to create an ethnically clean area for the Germans to occupy. Um, in, in terms of the, the military uh, preparation for this, uh, there is a significant amount of, of, uh, of uh, legal and, and uh, military order type preparation uh, that sets this attack, this, this war, apart from anything else we've ever seen before. Uh, the law of land warfare and any ethical conduct at all uh, was just cast aside. Um, inside every German soldier's paybook is a code of conduct, um, and it, 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 it re relates um, the, the, the norms of the law of war uh, as you and I would recognize them. Uh, treatment of civilians, treatment of prisoners of war, right behavior versus wrong behavior, rules of engagement, uh, rules of the use of force, those things are included in, this, in the paybook. And so the troops were very familiar with it. And what this series of, of orders that you see now did, it negated all of that. And it began well in advance of the attack. Uh, you'll notice that in, in as early as March of 1941, uh, the Barbarossa uh, order uh, is, is issued. And in it, it says that this is going to be a racial struggle and basically all bets are off. It, it allowed summary executions. Uh, it allows um, massive retaliation for any uh, any violence visited upon the attacking Germans. Um, and in, in, in May of 41, again, predating the, the invasion, uh, the, the troops are given specific guidance that this is going to be a different kind of, different kind of war. Uh, and the struggle, as you can see, demands ruthless and strenuous crackdown on Bolshevik ag agitators, irregulars, saboteurs, and Jews, and the complete elimination of both active and passive resistance. Um, and then they go on to, to, uh, to disparage the, the, the soldiers from the Eastern part of the Soviet Union uh, by saying that the Asiatic soldiers in particular are inscrutable, unpredictable, underhanded, and unfeeling. And then on 6 June, the, the infamous uh, uh, commissar order is issued. And in this order, this is the first uh, blatant violation of the law of war. Uh, the Wehrmacht is instructed to assassinate, for all intents and purposes, the commissars. These are uniformed members of the formation, uh, the political officers, admittedly, uh, but they are uniformed members of the formation, and they are going to be summarily executed as soon as they are, 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 are uh, captured. And any company grade officer can make the distinction. That I'm talking about from junior lieutenant and, and captains can make the decision to, to execute one of these uh, individuals. Um, and then in, in 1941, uh, Field Marshal Reichenau issues the severity order where he said that uh, basically any, any um, uprising, any resistance at all is of course caused by the Jews and they must all be killed. Um, so this is, going on it, 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 as this continues to, to develop over time, the ruthlessness uh, of the German army's attack in, into the Soviet Union uh, continues to grow. It gets, it gets more and more acute, uh, and there are more and more victims of this suffering. Of course, and, and famously, infamously, uh, if you just use the, uh, the, the Einsatzgruppe uh, that we first saw test-driven, if you will, in, in in, in the invasion of Poland in 1939 uh, is expanded hugely. Uh, and there are four of them. There are four large groups uh, made up of, of multiple smaller commandos, Einsatz commandos, and they are responsible for uh, well over a million deaths at this time. Uh, and these are the horrific pictures that we're also familiar with, the assassinations, the, the, the uh, executions, uh, the, the herds of people being... Uh, being uh, brought up to, to the end of, of, of slit trenches, uh, executed and then, and then thrown into the trench. Um, this of course was very expensive. Uh, it used a lot of ammunition. Uh, the German soldiers, uh, the SS, and we know now of course, the German soldiers were given instructions that if a, a mother and a child showed up, they should, they should put the child in front of the mother and then that way you could use one bullet to take care of them. Of both of them. Uh, it was a, an economy, uh, an issue of economy. Uh, but they also had second and third order effects they hadn't predicted. Number one was uh, the, the, the effect of killing uh, innocent and unarmed civilians was significant on, on, the, on the soldiers that were required to, 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 to do these murders. 
um, so much so that the German authorities had to resort to um, um, excessive amounts of alcohol and even drugs uh, to get the, the, the uh, soldiers to continue these killings. But it was clear uh, by, by summer of 1941 that this was impractical. This was no way uh, to accomplish the, uh, the national goal of the elimination, the extermination of the Jews in Europe, to make Europe Judenrein, uh, as, as we remember. So um, Goering tasks uh, uh, Heydrich uh, and purportedly at Hitler's uh, request to, uh, to assemble uh, the necessary uh, agencies, this is going to be a whole government approach to mass murder, uh, to assemble all the, the, the necessary agencies so that we can uh, affect this industrialized mass murder. Uh, the chief of the security police, uh, Reinhard Heydrich, is put in charge of this, um, and, and he assembles a group of, uh, of party uh, functionaries and SS personnel uh, at a uh, at a very large uh, and palatial house on on the on, on the Vonsay, the, the lake uh, just outside of Berlin, uh, and they have a, a meeting uh, there. And uh, and Heydrich's principal deputy for Jewish affairs, uh, uh, Adolf Eichmann, uh, is there as basically the secretary and and, uh, and recorder of, of this event. Um, the intent was to get rid of all of the documentation uh, of this event because it was supposed to be secret. Uh, again, this this boat goes down to Stanton's la last phase. This is part of the deception plan. Uh, I mean, this is evil and the perpetrators know it's evil. And, and so part of getting rid of the, the record of this meeting is to hide the fact that they're even doing it. Um, there are no purely military people at this meeting, but there are uh, paramilitaries, if you will, and some of these, these SS officers will serve both roles. And, and several of these SS officers go on to be members of the Waffen SS, the warfighting SS. And so the military connection here is, is uh, not, not strong, but it, it, is, it is present. Uh, this, it, this, um, this conference, of course, uh, as we all know, is, is where the final solution was cut up. And no longer are we trying to move Jews. Now we just want to kill Jews. Uh, and, and so they get down to the, to the very significant business of, uh, of, of, of extermination. And the first phase of this uh, is, of course, the death camps. Uh, and the four that I'll talk about first are uh, the three Operation Reinhard camps. And those are Treblinka, Sobibor, and Belzec. Uh, and then the one that predated uh, the Operation Reinhard camp, and that's that's Helmno. Uh, Helmno was actually opened in December of 41. Uh, the other three were all opened in uh, in the spring and, and early summer of 1942. Uh, they, they stayed open for about a year. Uh, and then at the end of their closure, at the end of the, their period of operation, they, they were closed and they were also uh, in, in large part, destroyed, buried over, hidden. Uh, again, part of the deception plan, uh, they, they wanted to hide the camps um, so that what happened there uh, wouldn't become known. Uh, a, a clear indication of what these camps were, were uh, designed to do was the fact that they had um, train stations that led right to a ramp, a, 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 a conduit down into a gas chamber and there were no barracks other than for the guard force. There were no barracks at these, at these camps. There's no intent ever to store anybody. The intent here is to murder people. And you get the rough numbers there on this, on this uh, chart. It indicates uh, Treblinka has the, uh, the very dubious honor of being uh, the number two producer of, of mass killing, second only to, to Auschwitz proper. Uh, these death camps, of course, uh, operated for a relatively short period of time. Two of them saw internal revolts, the most famous of which, of course, was in Sobibor. Um, but these, uh, the death camps did come to an end in 1943, uh, except Helmno. Helmno was actually reopened again in June of 1944 uh, and stayed operating until uh, January of 45. But this was for a different mission. Uh, it was still, the end result was still killing, but what they were trying to do, what the Nazis were trying to do at that time was to kill as many of the uh, Jews that were uh, in danger of being rescued by the Soviets. Uh, they wanted to get them to a place where they could uh, dispose of them before the Soviet rescue could be affected. 
Um, the other two death camps uh, that we, we mentioned, uh, I'll talk Modnik first. Uh, it, it, I don't want to intimate that 78,000 is a few number, is a small number. It's not. It's, a, it's an awful lot of people. But in, in relative terms, Modnik had a, a relatively small death toll. Uh, it, was a, it was a forced labor camp uh, with a secondary uh, mission of, of extermination. Auschwitz was a multi-purpose camp, um, and it was uh, it, it is responsible for uh, some 1.3 or well, between 1.1 1 .1 and 1.3 million killed. 1.1 million is the number uh, that is generally uh, ascribed to the Jewish victims of, of Auschwitz. Um, and I'll describe what Auschwitz work uh, did before. It was a it was a multifunctional uh, uh, facility, if you will. Um, and um, when we talk about Auschwitz, it is it is the paradigm, if you will, of uh, of the not National Socialist murder machine. Uh, and so it's inter it, it's worth our, our while to, to take a few minutes to lo look at how how Auschwitz developed and actually what it is, because it's many things. Um, this first uh, chart, you can see three yellow indicators, uh, the large one Birkenau or so-called Auschwitz II to the left. Uh, in the left center, you see a small yellow uh, area. That is the original Auschwitz. It was the Polish military barracks. And then uh, the third on the right is uh, Auschwitz Monowitz, Auschwitz III, uh, also called the Buna plant, the IG Farben Buna plant. Uh, I will do, I will look at them in order of one, three, and then back to two. This is a photograph of the main camp that was taken during the war, but not discovered until the 1960s. Um, and it, what it does is it lays out the 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 uh, the, the camp Auschwitz one um, as it was uh, in 1944, and uh, and this had become an administrative center and a and a holding area for prisoners of war. Um, <clears throat> it had been a, a Polish military barracks. Uh, it had was converted to a concentration camp subsequent to the to the 1939 invasion of Poland. Uh, and it became a dual purpose uh, concentration camp and small scale extermination center in September in 41. It only had one crematoria. Um, the inmates were predominantly uh, Polish. Uh, they were political leaders. They were academy professors. They were uh, physicians, attorneys, uh, bankers. Uh, they, they were the the um, power elite, if you will, of Poland. And, and again, uh, I think we mentioned earlier that Hitler's intent, uh, or at least the National Socialist intent was to decapitate the Polish society. And a lot of that decapitation happened right here at, uh, at Auschwitz I. Uh, as Auschwitz's role expanded, it became a, uh, an administrative center where the, uh, the logistics of, of the camp, uh, of the, the complex, of 40 plus subcamps, what was uh, was controlled and and commanded from from this building. Uh, Auschwitz III Buna. This is an IG five five excuse me IG Farben uh, rubber plant, uh, synthetic rubber plant Buna, uh, and it was at uh, located next to a small village called Monowitz. Um, this is the labor camp part of the um, of uh, Auschwitz. Uh, I mentioned earlier that it was multi-rolled. It was a slave labor camp. It was a prisoner of war camp. Uh, it was a concentration camp, and it was also a death camp. Um, this is the, lab the slave labor part of, uh, of Auschwitz III. Um, it was completed. Uh, it's about six and a half kilometers from Auschwitz I, so it is separated a little bit. Um, it was actually uh, bombed by the Allies in, in uh, 1944. Um, and there were some casualties. Uh, there were about 75 inmates uh, were killed there uh, and about 150 were injured. Um, <clears throat> and, and that's significant because of the, the still raging debate of, uh, of whether Auschwitz should have been bombed. Uh, one of the arguments of the Allied Air Force is that they could not range Auschwitz, yet they did in fact bomb it. Um, there's a lot of military necessity that went into not bombing Auschwitz, but, uh, but range was not one. Uh, and of course, the most infamous of the Auschwitz complexes is, is, is Auschwitz II, which is called the Birch Forest or the Birkenau. Um, and, and Auschwitz II, this is a purpose-built death camp. Uh, like this is this part of Auschwitz is just like Treblinka, Sobibor, Belzec, and Helmel. This is designed to kill people, and uh, and kill people they did. 
Um, this is, uh, it has four crematoria. There were actually five for a short period of time, uh, but there are four crematoria. This is industrialized murder uh, and it's pre-planned, uh, the way it's put together. Um, uh, more than uh, about half of the uh, Jews that were killed in, uh, in in Auschwitz happened very late in, in the game, and it was the, it was the Hungarian Jews that were the four hundred and thirty five thousand uh, Hungarian Jews uh, that were um, that were seized from from the Hungarians um, and sent to Auschwitz uh, in the spring and summer of nineteen forty four. So relatively late in the war. Um, and I should go back and, 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 and to, to give you context of why that's a, an important data point. Timothy Snyder makes a, a, a clear point in, in his book, uh, Black Earth, uh, about the Holocaust. Um, he, 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 he makes the point that by the end of 19, well, by mid-42, um, uh, well over a million and a half, two million uh, of Europe's Jews have already been killed. By the end of 1943, almost all of the Jews in, in, in large terms, uh, the largest proportion of Jews that are gonna be killed are already dead. Um, and then, so when I say that 44, summer of 44 was late in the game, it, it's that criterion against which I am measuring that. Um, the uh, Soviets, of course, uh, don't get to Auschwitz until the winter of, of, of 1945. Uh, the camp is liberated uh, at that time. Um, and the Soviets went to great lengths to try to preserve as much as they could of these camps. And, and going back uh, finally to talk about the denial a little bit more, um, the Soviets went to great lengths uh, to, to do a couple of things here. Um, first of all, they wanted to make sure that, um, that the camps at Treblinka, Sobibor, and Belzec, uh, and to a lesser degree, Kelmno, uh, which was largely intact uh, because it had been kept in operation for so long. Uh, but the other three purpose-built death camps, uh, they did their very best to excavate those and, and, and make sure that they were not hidden. Uh, and that included um, uh, digging up fields that had been planted over uh, and already been through one crop season uh, on top of the ruins of, of those death camps. Uh, they also went to great lengths to preserve uh, Auschwitz as best they could and Meidenek. Um, and to be able to um, prosecute uh, war criminals later on, and of course to shape political messages uh, later on as well. 